The Edible Bean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Hensel Co-op. I'm Kelvin Hepner for Real Agriculture, and on this episode of the Edible Bean School, we're pleased to be joined by Kristen McMillan of the University of Manitoba. And Kristen, you've been doing some research looking at nitrogen response in dry beans, in edible beans. I guess traditionally we've kind of treated edible beans as not super great at fixing their own nitrogen relative to other pulse crops. Yep, that's right. And so because of that, um, when you compare dry beans to other legumes like faba beans and soybeans and peas, they're the real workhorses when it comes to nitrogen fixation. But dry beans um, historically have been known to produce or to fix less than 40% of their nitrogen requirements. So we've really regarded them as non-legumes and standard practice in most areas Um, has been to fertilize to their full nitrogen requirements. And so I came into this um, research program and had a priority to revisit those end recommendations because the current ones are based on research done back in the early 2000s where we had different varieties and less bean history. And so the first study that I started was looking at nitrogen fertilizers uh, rates, basically a standard um, ramp up where I looked at rates from zero to 140 pounds of nitrogen. Uh, in pinto beans and navy beans at two sites across three years. And the key, we always want to have a lot of environments when we do uh, agronomic research, but it's also important to include the different market classes because one thing that's unique with dry beans is their specificity with their environment and with their rhizobia. So they can interact differently with different rhizobia species in different environments. We want to make sure or, or see if those varieties are responding differently. So that study has wrapped up um, and what we found, uh, the yield response, we only found a yield response to the high rate of nitrogen, 140 pounds. Uh, And when we applied the economics to that, there was actually no difference. So there was no response economically to nitrogen fertilizer, which was really surprising because here we've been treating dry beans as a non-legume. Where are they, how are they fulfilling their nitrogen requirements? Mm -hmm. So that kind of leads to where you're at now in your research. Where is that nitrogen coming from? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the, I think one of the biggest observations that I've made in the in the past uh, little while has been that we are seeing nodulation in dry beans, in non-fertilized, um, non-inoculated beans. And not just nodulation, but actually fairly good nodulation. And so it begs the question of, are we uh, missing out on some of the credit that we could be giving to their nitrogen fixation capability? Um, And with that question also comes the need, do we need to inoculate? Um, Dry bean rhizobia is native to uh, prairie soils. Uh, We don't know how efficient that rhizobia is and how specific it can be to different cultivars. So the second study was looking at various inoculant products that have also recently become available. So five years ago, uh, we didn't have any inoculants. It's not a widespread practice. They're not widely available. So currently I'm looking at um, uh, several inoculant products that have become available in four market classes, pinto, navy, black beans, and kidney beans across three sites. And I've been, this will be the fourth year that I've been doing that. Um, and so what I'm asking is, are the inoculation, uh, inoculant products increasing nodulation in our beans? Um, is it consistent across market classes and environments? Okay, so until now we've, like you said, been fertilizing, uh, applying nitrogen not really giving the plant any credit for its own fixation. What do we, what do the recommendations look like going forward? Do you think we're going to be changing the nitrogen recommendations for edible beans? That's the question. That's the ultimate question that we're trying to answer. And I do see changes and updates coming. Uh, We're currently still building that database, but when we look at it from the big picture, what we're trying to do is understand the nitrogen budget of dry beans. So if we have a 2000 pound bean crop, that bean crop needs about 90 pounds of nitrogen. Okay, so if we have 30 to 40 pounds residual nitrogen, um, where is the uh, 40 to 60 pounds coming from? Now, normally we've been adding supplemental nitrogen, but now the question is, can we be meeting that additional nitrogen through nitrogen fixation? Also other processes like mineralization and deep nitrogen. So that's what I think the take home message is currently is you need to be checking your dry beans, um, digging up those roots and checking for nodulation to try to answer that question in your specific field environment. Um, Also setting up an on-farm trial where you include a zero N check and you can really evaluate nodulation. Um, In terms of my research, I hope to be looking at the nitrogen fixation capacity of current cultivars. 
Um, to again get back to that question of if we need 90 pounds for a 2,000 pound dry bean crop, does that extra 30 or 35 pounds of nitrogen come from supplemental nitrogen or can we give credit to the biological end fixation that we're seeing? Mm -hmm. And I guess inoculants, if they prove to help, uh, could play a role in that. Absolutely. So um, when it comes to nitrogen fixation, are the rhizobia that are native to Manitoba soils effective enough or are these inoculant products introducing new strains that are more efficient? Okay. Finally then, Kristen, I guess the take-home message, you, you maybe already mentioned it. Uh, we need to be paying closer attention to the inoculation and mm -hmm. what's happening under the, with the roots in our edible beans and whether they are fixating their own nitrogen. Yes. So there are some soil factors um, that can reduce nodulation from what I've noticed, and one of those is soil pH. But for the most part, um, in all of the environments that we've tested so far, the majority of them are supporting good nodulation, and there's good nodulation across market classes. So it really comes down to your soil environment, um, scouting, checking for nodules, uh, making sure that they're pink inside, that they're working effectively looking at your soil test and just asking yourself how are you coming up with that nitrogen budget for your for your bean crop okay. next year. And stay tuned for updates to recommendations potentially down the road. Yes, so we're continuing to build that database and that will be coming out in the next few years. All right. Thanks for your time and we'll definitely be paying attention here, Kristen. Thank you. Thanks.